You know, I'm so thrilled you don't get tired of every day hearing about fungus because on today's show we have three physicians and a registered nurse talking about the fungus link. One of the last segments is Dr. Ann Shippey who said this mold that you breathe in a home can be neurotoxic. So you can be suffering with depression and crying jags and just feeling horrible in your home, but when you go outside and jog or you go to the store, you feel absolutely fine. Also, Dr. John Trowbridge begs this question. What happens when we do too many C-sections in the world? Okay, we're gonna discuss that. And finally, Dr. Christine Salter is talking about food and then diflucan and nystatin. Remember the names of those two drugs, right? Diflucan kills fungus in the bloodstream, nystatin kills it in the gut, and food can stop the fungus from growing through your body. Also, Jenny Herbacek, our nurse, joins us today. We got a great show lined up for you. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Dr. John Trowbridge joins me right now and will for the next, you know, eight, ten minutes, something like that, because this guy has earned distinction in this field. Oh, not according to his peers, but according to all <laughs> of us who follow the phase one diet, that's uh, Dr. John Trowbridge. Chapter one in his book, The Yeast Syndrome. Yeast disease is arising from modern technology. So what I asked Dr. Trowbridge, since he came all the way from Houston to visit us today to do, is take ten minutes and go from pediatrics to adolescents, to millennials, you know, then to people my age, and then to geriatrics, which I guess I qualify for the geriatrics too, but thanks for coming For in. several years now you've qualified, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go back that far. Cut. <laughs> we go back actually 35 years, we've had a ball during that 35 years, and we have been blessed to have you here in the studio from time to time, and uh, thank you for your knowledge. It really transcends the 30 years ago you wrote the book. This goes back about 40 years ago when you started to get keen right. on yeast. Um, let's start with children. What in the world is happening when juvenile diabetes is no longer juvenile? You know, right. when, when we're seeing little girls six years old with vaginal yeast infections, yes. it would never happen right. decades ago. What's going on? You know, Doug, it's really simple. We used to live on farms. We used to live in towns. Now we live in cities and buildings, and the whole point of modern life is very comfortable and tasty. Yeah. So we don't have real foods anymore, we have packaged foods. I say you eat plastic food, you get plastic people. The problem with plastic people is their immune system is gone. So we don't do spontaneous deliveries anymore, we do C-sections about 35 or 40 percent of the time. Wow. So the kid doesn't get a good start with the bacteria he's supposed to grab through the birth canal. Through the birth canal. Right. So now you've got a baby who's going to be put on formula, and that's not like breast milk. I mean, that's what the whole point of having breasts was about, okay? Yep. Gives the kid a start with his immune defense system. So what do they get? Ear infections, throat infections, bronchitis, nose, and whatever. You see the pediatrician. Now you get more modern technology called antibiotics. Problem. That solves the acute episode, but doesn't protect you from getting yeast overgrowth. You know, when you give an antibiotic, you kill the bacteria, including the good ones that are protecting you, but you have to reseed those and protect you from getting a yeast overgrowth when your good bacteria aren't present. The doctors aren't paying attention to that. I mean, every once in a while you hear someone is. And then it just starts from there and goes downhill. And it's, it's self-propelling. Oh. In other words, yes. now with a nude intestine, by the way, folks, we have figured 70, 80 percent of our entire immune system rests here in the gut. So antibiotics, the great invention that they were, they probably saved a lot of lives, but I've always said for every one they've saved, there may be two more that are living miserable lives right now because their doctor doesn't know. Just two? About the, okay, ten <laughs> more <laughs> uh, from the terrain of the gut. But what you're talking about is so critical because you literally live in your gut. There's billions and billions and billions of bacteria growing, and now the latest research is they're starting to type these, and they'll tell you what kind of diseases you either have or you're more likely to develop based on the gut bacteria that you have growing. 
and, and it gets even worse because not only are we worried about bacteria changes, yeast parasites. Yep. Yep. The whole thing yep. is getting bad. Parasites are very persistent. They're everywhere. Yeasts, on the other hand, are sinister. <laughs> and they will grow inside. And every time you have stress or cortisone or uh, you take more antibiotics, uh, you have mm -hmm. crappy food, mm -hmm. then you get more yeast. And then the toxins start. And, you know, we talk about the gut and the immune system. The brain talks with the same hormone systems, transfer systems. And, and so these two are talking to each other all the time. Now you've got kids with troubles in school with uh, ADD and attention problems and learning disorders and concentration issues. Wait a minute. That's a reason for another drug. I was going to go there with you and ask about these 90-some neurological problems we see with kids today, but you already addressed that. Then we see amenorrhea. Yep. Little girls, 15 years old, yep. no period, or yep. dysmenorrhea. Oh, I hurt so bad. Incredibly painful. Uh, what in the world? 50 years ago, we didn't see that. You know, Doug, the real problem mm. with trying to teach doctors about the yeast syndrome, and, and patients get it very quickly, is it's not a yeast infection. It's yeast overgrowing, definitely, but it's not like a vaginitis or a thrush or an right. ear infection, whatever. What it is is poison that's being produced by the yeast going out through the body. And those poisons attack everything, your hormones, mm -hmm. your neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. your vitamins, your minerals, your fats, proteins, everything. Now, what about, now that we've gone uh, pediatric and adolescent, what about the 30-something? And what about we oldsters? Don't go away, Dr. Trowbridge. We'll be right back with more. Chapter two in the East Syndrome talks about Jane. What happened to little Jane? She's growing up. She's in her 20s or 30s now, and she's seeing many, many doctors, right? The seed has been planted. Dr. Trowbridge is gonna take it from the 20s and 30s to 40s and 50s. Doug, as we've discussed many times, the problem is not that you have yeast in your gut. The problem is the poison's going everywhere, and women are particularly complicated because their chemistry has to make new babies. But where does that poison come from? It comes from it the comes yeast. It comes from the yeast growing in their These gut. These are called mycotoxins. Exactly. And, you know, as much as other doctors don't want to admit it, yeast does permeate through various tissues, certainly can grow inside the kidneys and the bladder and so on, definitely grows inside the lungs, the mouth, the sinuses. And the sinuses. Mm. You know, that's where I found number. the whole leftover that I always have to address from the beginning is here, otherwise it will be left over and they'll get the problem again, they'll reseed. The deal is, is that women see doctors because they're uncomfortable and worried, mm -hmm. and then they get drugs, oh mm -hmm. boy, and that then starts more of the yeast Horm growth. Either birth control pills. Birth control pills, hormone other replacement, hormones, whatever. Yeah. The problem is, in my worldview, shattered lives, because in your 20s it's not working out quite well for you, and you don't make the career choices and changes that you should be. You're not performing. You're not having your family comfortably. In fact, after, after delivery, sometimes women just fall apart. And they call it postpartum blues or depression. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Wait a minute. Nobody's looking at how the yeast is impacting these poor ladies. And that then starts the whole cycle again over with their children. Some of these mycotoxins cause horses and cows to spontaneously abort or breakthrough bleeding, or just miserable reproductive disorders. And yet we have fertility specialists today who charge you $30,000 to come yes. in and tell you, not about the horse or cow, but about how you need to harvest your eggs and he needs to harvest a sperm and put them together. Folks, think fungus. Now, I'm soon to be 67 years young. I feel great, worked out hard this morning. I feel, you know, like a 30 year old. Hey, Doug, they know you're lying. Okay, I'm 20. 77. <laughs> I feel so good, but I've addressed this yeast problem. You know my story since right. I got back from Vietnam. I've right. been addressing it, trying to starve it, trying to treat it, and it's done very, very well for me. But it hasn't for everyone. And exactly. I thought it was just Vietnam. A lot of you guys weren't in Vietnam, yet you have this same problem. Right. So we get a get-out-of-jail-free card at 65, right, Medicare. <laughs> yes. and, and it shocks the government that we don't go right in for a PSA, a rectal exam, a, you know, a blood test. And uh, that's just an area I'm not going in. Right. So what is it as we get old that we are seeing more and more and more doctors? Does our body necessarily have to deteriorate in our 50s Oh, and certainly 60s? not. But remember, you're being poisoned. We've got personal pollution as the major problem as we grow older, not just from the toxic metals in our society, the mercury, the lead, the mm -hmm. arsenic, and so on, but also from the poisons generated inside mm -hmm. by the yeast, especially by the yeast, other things as well, bacteria and parasites can affect us and so on. But the key thing is take care of, you know, the most important one, and that would be the yeast. 
Why? Because we have bread, we have beer, we have wine, we have whiskey, we have great pasta, we have donuts, we have all these foods that encourage the growth of the yeast, and that's getting us sicker <laughs> that's and right. sicker and sicker. Because we're 65. You got it's it. Okay. You're in a television studio today. Have you ever been in one that didn't have donuts and soda pop and <laughs> no. so forth? Kind of boring around But here. I did ask someone to go get them for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. John Trowbridge has written a book I want you to pick up. It's in paperback. Is it an e-book yet? It's an e-book, too. Okay. It's called The Yeast Syndrome. Easy read. It was for me 30 years ago. Um, and it just keeps getting better. This it's not book, as easy to read as yours, the fungus link. Mine was taking polysyllable words like you have in here, uh -huh. but now we know what those words mean, <laughs> and, and make them real simple for the average right. show. Right. Uh, we both have sold, you know, huge volume of these books, right. and I don't think the volume on sales is going to go down because of what he's no. talking about. You're saying then, Dr. Trowbridge, literally from womb to tomb, a this absolutely. yeast can grow in your body. Absolutely. You're just being recycled. You just have to remember, it's nothing personal. This is what the fungus is supposed to do. Take living things, either in the animal or the plant side, and recycle. And fungus grows deep in the soil. And the deeper you dig, the more fungus, right? What's it want to do? It wants to go home. Do you think it's coincidental <laughs> that we dig a six-foot hole and put you in it? Fungus wins 100% of the time. Thank you for being with us today. If you'd like a copy of this book, look, we've got his website, his telephone number. Houston, and you take new patients? All the time. Okay, good. The Yeast Syndrome author, dear friend of mine for many, many years, Dr. John Trowbridge. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dad. You bet. Dr. Trowbridge always blows me away. It was great to see him. I hope you enjoyed that. Now. It's important that we get rid of mold and mildew in our home, but at what cost, folks? Nurse Jenny Herbacek delves into this right now. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. What's in your laundry room or under your kitchen sink? Research suggests that the more household cleaners you use, the higher your risk of breast cancer. Mold and mildew cleaners have shown the greatest correlation with breast cancer. So what can you do? How about using something as simple as distilled white vinegar to sanitize and baking soda for those cleaning jobs that require a little scrubbing? You'll not only decrease your cancer risk, you'll save money too. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. That is Christine Salter. Uh, Dr. Salter is a chiropractor, a naturopathic doctor, osteopathic naturopathic doctor, a medical doctor, board certified. Why do I even do this? We just <laughs> ought to have it at the bottom. Lots of doctorate degrees. Welcome to the show. Very, very smart Thank person. You. We appreciate you. I get a question a lot, and that is, Doug, my doctor isn't prescribing antifungals. Um, is, is there an alternative? And I say, you bet there is. Um, food. Food. is antifungal. Many people don't know, but green food, chlorophyll. I mean, right. you give your patients chlorophyll to take. This is antimycotic, antifungal, but there are many, many non-prescriptive antifungals, but thanks to Know the Cause, we got it drilled in our head. If we don't get diflucan and nystatin, we're not going to get better. I will tell you, Dr. Salter, that tends to expedite things, right. speeds up in a couple of weeks. Wow, I feel great. My blood sugars are stabilized. My cholesterol, you know, but there's so many other good ones, and with your background in naturopathic medicine yes. and herbal medicine, you really know them. Yes, absolutely. Food is medicine. And again, as, as you've said, the, the prescription antifungals, they're kind of the top of the triangle. Sure. The foundation is the food. It's the lifestyle, because we're really talking about boosting the immunity, boosting the immune system, allowing the body to help heal what's going on. So it's how we sleep, what we drink, what we eat. So your, your green leafy, you know, green leafy vegetables, all the colors of the rainbow, the rainbow diet, getting all those, all those nutrients and those phytonutrients that are in the foods, the, not, not the M&Ms, not, 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 not that color. <laughs> you know, we want, we want the real color from, from the foods. And then natural antifungals, garlic. Yeah. You, can, you can, you know, the nice crushed garlic, you can put it into your olive oil your apple cider vinegar, make a nice, with lemon juice, make a nice salad dressing, right on your nice green leafy salad. That's antifungal right there, yeah. you know? And olive leaf extract, you know, that, that, that you can take as a supplement. 
you know. But again, really, we, we supplements are just that. They are supplements. We want to be eating the food and then supplement on top and then the medicine on top of that. Dr. Uh, Salter is a different kind of a doctor if you're not getting them. She has a concierge practice. People pay her to keep themselves and their family well. This is so diametric to what's going on in medicine today. Most doctors see patients and keep them on the cusp of illness with drugs. No, no offense, doctors are really good people. I have a whole lot of friends who are doctors and you agree. But the system is built in, you know, not really to help that much. What you have found is you do more than intercept symptoms. You want to drive us all the way back to wellness and with diet, exercise, good food, you can sleep. do that. Sleep. Yes. It's that important? It's that important. In fact, sleep in less than six hours a night increases the risk for diabetes, increases the risk for cancer, causes hormonal dysregulation. If people are not sleeping, they're not going to heal. So and, you, you have to sleep. And part of the reason they're not sleeping is because of the ice cream, the beer, you know, right before they go to bed. Before they go to bed. I wish people knew this. Thank you so much for your knowledge and your willingness to help our, our audience. Thank you. That is Dr. Ann Shippey from Austin, Texas, one of the most beautiful cities here in the United States. So she has a great practice up there. And she does something few physicians do. Oh, you've met Dr. John Trowbridge, who's the big boy at this. She suspects mold and then tests patients for mold. Often mold is indoors. Some of the cleanest houses, oh, you can dust three times a day and vacuum and get your windows clean. But if you got your carpets clean, I want to talk to you because that's spreading wetness onto your carpet and then sealing it in, okay? So thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing what you've done in the past decade. The research, the knowledge, the sitting down with the patients an hour and a half at a time uh, and helping them figure out. I, I want to talk on this segment about something that the American government discovered in 1945 that a mold, oh, what was the name of it? Penicillin. Penicillium was neurotoxic. But they found in tiny, tiny doses, it could wipe out bacteria. That, by the way, is called penicillin today, but too much of it, you know where I'm going with this. But you're one who specializes in something that's kind of remote, and that is indoor air. And the insurance companies don't like this, and the realtors don't necessarily like it. But you say it really exists, indoor air mold problem. I do, I do, and especially after experiencing it myself and seeing exactly. that I got better very quickly after getting in a clean environment. But um, it's actually a very common problem. Um, Berkeley Research Lab accumulating the data shows at least 50% of homes have uh, had water damage that probably have residual hidden mold. And Is then up to 80% of office buildings. And I'm kind of thinking even higher amounts of schools based on I what I'm seeing. totally agree. And you know why? That big ducting system that when they leave school, the heat is on, when they come, or vice versa, when they come back, the air is on. And it's that black liquid that sits in those ducts, the moisture, that we then turn them back on. Ironically, they tell us these kids weren't vaccinated. You know, that's why they're the sick ones. Folks, the teacher gets sick, and she's been fully vaccinated. And then you have the herd mentality. The kids are back into school, but the mold is going through the ducting system, and four or five kids are out, and we say, well, that's just coinkadinky. It really has an etiology. There's an etiological reason, and very often it is mold. It, and uh, it's not just the spores. So the spores, we know, they do carry some mycotoxins on them, the chemicals that mold makes, but it's, it's actually what's put into the air. Almost, I think about it as being like a little diffuser, um, like we, we do fragrances. There's right. hidden chemicals being sent out by the hidden mold, and those easily go into our bodies through our lungs and through our skin. And so it's those chemicals that are actually poisoning us and making us sick. And they fall in, the kids are in the bathtub, they fall in their ears, they go to the doctor, the doctor gives them, ready, mold <laughs> to fix <laughs> their bacterial <laughs> problem. So now the mold in the building even gets worse. Question I want to pose to you. Do you think, uh, lack of a better word, cerebral symptoms, neurological symptoms are induced by some of these indoor home, indoor building, indoor school molds? 
Absolutely, and there's actually some good research that's starting to link that, and that the, some of these toxins and uh, the chemicals that molds are making do actually poison the neurons. And so we see symptoms like brain fog, not being able to remember things, not being able to make decisions well. And I think, based on what I'm seeing in my patients, even things like OCD and depression and anxiety, if I see somebody that's all of a sudden becoming very, very anxious, um, and that's they might have had a tendency towards a little bit of anxiety in the past, and they're, they're all of a sudden more significantly anxious, then I start looking for those hidden environmental toxins. Question, final question uh, today. Can mold problems that have been inhaled uh, be fixed or can they be treated? Uh, in other words, do you have patients who fully recover? Fully recover. Yeah. And that's, I can tell you from what's happened in my own body, from being very sick and having significant neurological problems, 100% well. But it takes a lot of work. It's getting a clean environment. It's getting all the nutrients that your body needs to run your biochemistry and physiology yep. Yep. and getting rid of infections that have gotten into the body from the immune system being suppressed. Wow. It is so nice to sit down and interview you. I am so sorry you got sick, oh, but I am you. so happy that you crawled out of that sickness and are well today. Thank you. And I wow. feel very, very blessed. And I want to help other people know that there are solutions to some of these very difficult uh, challenges that there aren't obvious answers for out in the traditional medical model. Precisely why you're sitting in that chair. We have a great audience and they now hear and heed this. I think folks what Dr. Shippey is saying, and by the way it's Ann Shippey, MD, uh, internal medicine. I think what she is saying is look they're superficial fungus, right, ringworm, and then they're deep mycoses. Maybe in a few months you can fully recover from that. And we're told that you can never fully recover from a deep mycosis, that in the kidney, lungs, liver, et cetera. But what I hear over and over from these physicians who are now specializing in the mycosis in fungus treatment is the deeper it is, the more time it might involve, but don't worry, I'm going to take you by the hand. I want to see you every month. Um, but I think by maybe working with some of these supplements and with your diet, we can help you. There is always hope on Know the Cause. Thank you, Dr. Shippey. Thank you. You bet. Today, I want to tell you some personal things. As a child, I was extremely overweight, super allergic, and suffered terrifying asthma attacks. I couldn't play sports or go swimming because I could barely run and I had a fear of drowning. I even had asthma attacks come on from the fear of having an asthma attack. As time went on, I, like many of you, just accepted this, but the fear of not being able to breathe really took a physical and emotional toll on me. When I became a teenager, I decided to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And unsurprisingly, I lost 60 pounds. I then switched to a diet which eliminated all sugar, most bread, and consisted of hamburger patties on salad greens with olive oil dressing. While I am certainly not recommending that extreme form of dieting, but I have to tell you, my allergies and asthma went away. Heck, I was trying to look better. I said adios to my inhalers and antihistamines and never looked back. If you want to know more, you can read all about it in my book, The Allergy and Asthma Cure. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatori for Know the Cause. Come on, what other health show in the world brings you this much information? Do you remember that, what was it, Airplane, that silly movie with Leslie Nielsen? Remember all the doctors getting on the plane? Doctor, 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 doctor. That's what we had today. Right, Dr. John Trowbridge, Dr. Salter, I love her, Dr. Shippey, uh, and then Nurse Jenny Herbacek. Folks, it's one thing to hear that fungus might be causing massive sickness in America. It's a whole other thing when a nurse and three physicians come on the show and say, Doug, you might, you just might be right. Why don't you start starving it today? It's parasitic. Try the Kaufman diet. It's on our website, knowthecause.com. We'll see you next time.